the last few months, it feels like the typhoon season has just been unstoppable, especially if you're down here in the Philippines. Back the back storms have been impacting you out here. But if we look at the bigger picture all the way back to January, this year has been actually relatively calmer than normal. Now I fully understand typhoon season is not over yet. It never really ends in the Western Pacific, but this year we didn't have our first named storm system until Vongfong in May. Typically we get storms sometime in January, February, April, or even March, but uh, first one was Vongfong. It was a typhoon, it hit the Philippines. And then we didn't ha even have another named storm system until Hagupit, which pushed just north of Luzon in the Taiwan into August. It really wasn't until October through November when things really started to kick up. And that's when we had this eight named storm systems to hit the Philippines in just over a month. But if we look at the bigger picture, let's take a look. 2020 typhoon season thus far, 22 named storm systems. The average is 24, so we're below average. Now, granted, we still have a month left in the season here. 39 named storms is a record that was set back in 1964. But here's some of the more interesting things. We've had 10 typhoons, typically we get 15, and the ace is way lower than normal. We're at 145. 148 I should say typically we get 271 for the entire year now if you're not sure what the ace is it basically is the amount of energy put out by a tropical system during its lifespan what we've had a lot this year is these rapidly developing storm systems a lot of the times they just spring right up just towards the east of the Philippines become a major storm and then die off pretty quickly so you don't have that energy accumulating over the course of days and that's why overall our ace is pretty low actually the number of days where we had a typhoon in the western pacific just spinning out there has been 30. feels like a lot but typically we have 61. And by the way back in 1997 we had 114 days where there was a typhoon somewhere in the western pacific ocean so what does this tell me well there's a few things first off uh, above average sea surface temperatures has been creating these faster developing storms a lot of people talk about climate change talk about global warming they say you know we're going to see more storms that's not typically the case not even stronger storms is typically the case we've always seen strong storms but the problem is higher sea surface temperatures are basically like octane higher octane fuel to put into the storm and it accelerates faster we get a faster developing storm system it just helps fuel that heat engine plus the other issue we've seen this year is these back-to-back -back tracks I actually made a separate video talking about why we had so many back-to-back -back storm systems hit the Philippines please do go check that out but overall this year has been less potent than normal if you look at the entire year across the entire Western Pacific I know there are those of you who are likely watching this and thank you very much for watching that were impacted by these storms not even in a minor extent to a very significant extent I'm not trying to minimize what you've felt how these storms have impacted you but I'm just trying to give a broader context here at the overall view of the Western Pacific but knock on wood we're still in November when I made this video things could change but at least a long-range forecast doesn't show that as well I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at what the Western Pacific here in 2020 has looked like thus far and how it has stacked up to years past please do check me out on Facebook and Twitter though I'll post this graphic up there if you guys want to take a look at it if you have any questions about that or anything like that and uh, yeah subscribe to this YouTube channel but of course as always thanks for watching and stay safe out there